Hello. I wanted to make this video to shed a little bit of light into the thing with the joints and what you can do to them when creating them. So, in order to do this, uh, well, I, I just get into this and I'll show you a little bit of things. So, um, given the situation, maybe you want to do an arm, and it's like this. This is the arm. But uh, your character maybe has uh, maybe I, I do a, a quick cylinder. Just to, to get this. So maybe your character has an angle an arm at an angle like this. And well the thing is you still make the joint in an auto, in an orthographic view in order to have uh, the right proportions but now you can do pretty much at, at this part of the process you can do pretty much whatever you like to, uh, to the joints so we can translate this, rotate this however we want to get the orientation right and yeah and so on and so on what you need to take care especially for for, for limb uh, for joints like elbows and knees and yeah, pretty much everything that's gonna have an IK on it, on the on the middle joint. You need to look when I go to the attributes. You need to look here in the joint orient. In the end of the creation, you need to have clean orient X and clean orient Z. So that only orient Y has an attribute, because otherwise, you know, if we if we add some orient X here, the IK will start to do strange things as soon as you apply a pole vector. So always make sure that uh, only orient y is um, has a value. And another thing, you know, when, for instance, this character has a rather straight arm, so characters never have straight arms, but just given this example where we need to readjust this joint, you can certainly do and rotate this joint and then freeze transformations. Now look what, what happens to the orientation here as I freeze the rotations. It doesn't matter, we could freeze all because uh, translate values are not affected by the freezing. So I choose freeze all and now take a look here at the, at the joint orientation. See? It changed. So what the freeze does is it takes away the rotations from here, zeroes them out, and calculates them back here in order to have clean rotation channel, but still having the orientation here right. So what you also can do, for example, here, we could go ahead and move this bone back. But here comes the problem. When I do this, I take a look here. My ha I have my automatically orient joints at off, so that means that when I move this back, this bone's local rotation axes are now. If, if I zoom out, you can notice this a little. They are no longer pointing to this joint, so you can see this uh, here much more clearly. That. Even if, if, if this thing here, the, the little arrow from the bone is pointing to this to the to the bone down the hierarchy, the local rotations the local rotation axes are not. So moving the bone like this is not always a good idea. Unless you know what you're doing. And I'm going to show you a fix you how you can do this later. But um, also if this automatic orient joints is on, there's another problem when the arms are at an angle like this because the up axis of the joints are going to uh, are going to change so you can see as I move this see how this rotated and if I take a look now at my rotation axis at my joint orients you can see it wrote something here at uh, orient x so we don't want this we want this to be at zero you can, you can zero this out later because rotate x is just a 
the forward axis, it means we can we can rotate this and this it'll change nothing on the on the direction it's pointing at. But however, yeah, we I usually prefer to leave this off and choose my own way. So we can do example, we want to put this joint back here. We can go ahead and scale this back. There's no problem in scaling. But as soon as we're done with scaling, never forget to freeze transformations. So that it gets back to one. Otherwise, you're going to have weird results with uh, joints down the line because the uh, matrix scale is going to be offset, and you'll find yourself, uh, you'll find your Maya sometimes adding a transform node over the joint uh, in order to compensate that scale offset. So, always, it's a good idea, wherever your joints are stored in, freeze the scale transformations of that as well. Uh, for instance, or maybe even all transformations. So now the, the rotations here are gone, and they are back here in the joint orient. Okay, so that's as far as, uh, as it goes for this. Now let me show you a little uh, way to, to do this a little bit more custom. So maybe you have... Um, if I've, I'm going to, to remove this, this guy now, because I don't need this. I'm going to create three new joints. And I'm going to use vertex snap. I'm going to create the first one with uh, holding the V and snap to this one. I'm going to hit the Y key to go to repeat tool, snap to the next one, hit the Y again, and snap to the next one. So then I have, if I go to the outliner, it's a little bit smaller, three joints here that are all oriented to the world. Okay? I'm going to have this first joint. Select all of this, maybe make them a little bit bigger so we can see them better. And turn on the local rotation axis. So you can see we need to reorient these joints now. How we can do this? Um, well, there's an easy way. What I like to use, um, also I, I use this algorithm with the um, in my auto-rigging scripts, that I use in constraints. So what happens is that this bone needs to point to this bone, and this bone needs to point to this bone. And they all need to be uh, need to have their up axis pointing to this bone here, or in the direction of this bone. So that if I if I draw a curve from here to there, where's my curve? There is my curve. Um, you can see this. The, the, this here, this little. I can draw a curve from here to there. And now there needs to be um, the up axis needs to be pointing in a direction uh, orthogonal to this to this vector plane. That means up in, in that direction. So I'll show you how to do this. Maybe I, I think this uh, example with the cursor was a little bit confusing, so I'm just going to go with the um, jump into the only constraint, uh, uh, end constraint stuff. So pull out my end constraint menu, make sure my tin offset is off so that the joints um, rotate directly to the to the next one. So let me remove this. What we knew, do now is um, constrain the first one. So it goes like this. We select first uh, the one that is driving, then the, dri the driven. And now we, we need to take some things in mind. So the aim vector is x. That means that this guy's x-axis is going to aim down to, this, uh, to the constraint object. The up vector, in our case, is going to be z, so that uh, the z-axis of this joint points to this joint. It'll try its best because the up axis is uh, like a secondary axis. So what happens is that this joint will rotate its x. I'm going to rotate this. This is the way that's going to be. It's going to rotate down in order to have the x-axis pointing into this bone. So a little bit like this. 
and then it's going to rotate along its own axis. You can see, in order to have the z-axis pointing to this bone. That's it. So let's do this. Um, first, select this guy's name, put him here into the world up object. Now, driver, driven. Make sure everything is okay, and hit apply. Okay, now you can see what happened. Um, I'm going to now delete the constraints. The rotate values are still here, we can freeze transformations. And now you can see the joints uh, flip directions, and now it's pointing the way we want. <coughs> um, now let's do the second one. It's this guy. I mean, this guy is pointing to this guy. And this joint 4 is the world up object. Uh, again, pointing with x down and z. And with... Uh, it's, uh, maybe... Yeah, you can see. So now we delete the constraint. Freeze its transformations. And now we got uh, things about right. You can see the z-axis is a little bit offset, but that's just because of the way that we created them before. So this is uh, this is the right um, uh, orientation that they need to have. So now I'm going to parent them, and then what we can do is zero out all of this guy's transformation axis, and now you can see all of our z-axes are pointing in the same direction. What we can do now because maybe we imagine this is an arm, so upper arm, forearm, wrist. The wrist is not connected, the rotation of this control has no influence on the IK system that we would apply here to this one. So, the, you could have modeled the character's arms in any sort of angle. We can do this rotation to this joint. There's no influence on the, on the IK system above it. So we can rotate it to point in whatever direction your wrist is pointing at. Freeze transformations once again, and still apply an, uh, an IK constraint with no problems. So now, since this arm is on an angle, there's uh, a way to place uh, the pole vector. There are several ways, um, with some scripts, or with, um, with the parenting, or with an extra plane. Let me show you the easiest one, the fastest one, it's just um, parenting. So you create a, a pole vector object, parent it to the to the set, to the middle joint of the IK chain, zero out all of its transformations, translate it back into its local Z axis, unparent it, and now when we apply an pole vector constraint to the IK handle, there will be no shift. So let's try this constraint pole vector. So you saw no shift, clean rotations, everything works as expected. And yeah, that's it so far. I hope this helped and shed a little bit of light into what you can do with joints and how it affects the joints. So if you have some more questions, uh, yeah, send me the questions. See you soon.